GCSE students. Today we're going to discuss pie graphs and uh, scatter graphs and learn how to do those. So the first thing we'll look at is pie graphs and I've got uh, an example here we've been given a table and you can see on this table we've got some different ice cream flavors uh, that people like and the frequency uh, of people who pick that as their favorite ice cream flavor and we've got to work out the angle uh, that it would be in a pie graph. Your first step in these kinds of questions is to figure out uh, the total uh, number of people who are involved here. So 18 and 9, uh, 27, 27 and 3, 30, 30 and 24 is 54, 54 and 2 is 56, uh, and 10 is 66, and 6 is 72. So we've got 72 people here. Okay, and at this point, um, we want to find out what one person would equal. So I'm going to say, uh, one person, how many degrees is that? And to find out that, we're going to go 360 divided by 72. So when I do that, 360 divided by 72, I'm getting 5. Okay, 5, right. So that means that we're going to multiply each of these numbers by 5. So if there was a frequency of 1, uh, we'd get uh, 5. But if there's a frequency of 18, well, this is going to be 90. So 5 times 18 is 90. So that should be a quarter of our circle. And 18 over 72 is a quarter, so that's good. So this is 90 degrees. 5 nines, this is... 45 degrees, and that does make sense, doesn't it? Given that 9 is half of 18, and 45 is half of 90. 15 degrees for the next one, for cookies and cream. Uh, this one is going to be 120 degrees for vanilla, which is a third. Now, 24 times 3 is 72, so that is a third. Yep, that makes sense. The next one is going to be 60. 5 tiles is 60, so it'll be a 60 degree angle. And the last one, hokey pokey, will be... Uh, 30 degrees. And I'm not going to go ahead and construct that. I imagine that you're okay with constructing a, a circle and then using your protractor to divide your circle into those um, angles. Let's now move on uh, to correlation. So in correlation uh, we need to uh, understand a few terms. So first of all we need to understand positive correlation. So positive correlation uh, is always going up from left to right, like these two here. So you can see there's a angle like that, yep. Or another one over here, you can see vaguely it's going up. Okay, that's positive correlation. Now negative correlation is going down from left to right. So you can see that goes down and this one goes down uh, and here we've got another one vaguely going down. Okay, so that's the difference between positive and negative. So positive from, uh, from left to right goes, uh, goes up and negative left to right goes down. And then the strength of something depends on the kind of uh, how, how closely together the data is gathered. So you can see if we look at this, that this data is all gathered quite closely to a sort of a centre line here. You can see it's not too far away on either side. Whereas this data here whoop, is a little bit further away from that sort of centre. And this here is strong and you can see it's gathered quite closely together to a sort of a a middle center line, you can see it's not far away on either side. Whereas this one here is a little bit further away from that middle center line, and this one here is even further away from what might be the middle, you can see. Okay, so the, the further spread it out it is, like this, then it's going to be weaker, and the more in a straight line it is, uh, it's going to be stronger. Uh, this one here clearly has no correlation, it's just scattered all about. Okay, well, that's that. Let's move on to an actual past exam question uh, on this. So we've got the owner of a small cafe, and this owner is recording the air temperature and the number of hot drinks he sells for each day for a week. 
and we have to uh, plot this on our scatter diagram. So, number of drinks sold, 12, and the air temperature at that point was 18. So you go 12 on your y-axis across to 18 on the x-axis. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot these now. Okay, so uh, our final point on this is we need to draw the line of best fit. With your line of best fit, you want roughly the same number of data points above and below the line. Unless they're outliers, like really far out, like for example, if we had a little point off over here, um, we could probably ignore that as an outlier. Uh, okay, so where am I going to draw this? Well, I can see, I think, probably something like... Something like this might be okay. You can see that we've got two above, fairly close, and two below, both fairly close as well. Maybe this one, uh, I could maybe perhaps steepen it a little bit uh, uh, on this side here. Perhaps could be pulled down a bit. But I think that that would be sufficient at this stage. And once you've got a line of best fit, you can make some predictions. Like somebody might say, uh, I wonder how many, approximately how many drinks would be sold um, at... Uh, maybe 22 degrees. So drinks at 22 degrees. So you go along to 22, you measure up until you hit your line, and then you go backwards, uh, to the, sorry, across to the left, and you'd find out, in this case, roughly 10 hot drinks would be sold if the air temperature was 22 degrees. Well, I hope this quick introduction to scattergrams and to pie graphs is helpful to you. I hope you're able to get on with that exercise without too much difficulty. All right then, take care.